to talking about title players in general. And um, we obviously have already prefaced the fact that we've seen record numbers in terms of people playing online. One of the shocking things that happened over this last month was that we also saw a record number of title players sign up, meaning the way a title player signs up on our site, just, to, just so you know the process, is they sign up. They have to send in a selfie of them with a date and says chess.com on it. So it's a selfie so we know it's them, along with a picture of their passport or some sort of ID, right? Um, and you'd be surprised how many people try to Photoshop uh, and, and get a free diamond membership as a title player. We've got to write a blog about that one day and show the best Photoshops of people trying to do identity theft. I'm, I'm legit. Someone make a note about that, please. Um, and so title players uh, have been signing up in the masses as well. And that's always shocking to us because you would think, like, aren't all the title players already playing online? But the chess world is so huge, and the chess world's legacy has been beyond all of us online here, right? They've, you know, the chess world has been around before chess.com exists, and it'll be around long after the Internet goes down, when we all go dark and John Connor takes over and leads us to freedom, right? I mean, chess has been around forever. And so the amount of title players signing up has also been amazing. A lot of them have been taking advantage of the offerings we have. We turned our Title Tuesdays into a weekly thing, you know, to, to give back even more. We're we're launching the premium arena. Uh, we increased the prize funds in Title Tuesday, as you saw. So not only did we increase the prize fund, but it's now weekly instead of monthly. Um, and then not just the first Tuesday, but every Tuesday. Uh, there's more coming in terms of events that I have been sworn to secretly see on some of those, so I'm not going to say it yet. But we have plans to increase our offering overall and, and things that have already existed, but maybe unifying and making them bigger, badder, and greater. Uh, bigger, better, faster, stronger. Thank you, Daft Punk. But... There's also been a lot of title players who have experienced the pandemic, if you will, of online cheating. And, and forgive me if that's an inappropriate term right now, but I would argue that we've been facing our own kind of pandemic. Um, and um, before, I, before I start talking about that, I want to bring up an open letter that was sent to chess.com. Uh, we threw this on our own template, but this was a Word document that was sent to us by International Master. It was forwarded to us by Beglar Jobaba, International Master, but it was signed by many title players, including some of the world's best. Um, and to be quite honest, a few names that um, maybe maybe they're more familiar with our fair play process than some of their peers know, if that's, if that's the most appropriate way I can say that about some of the names on there and for those listening. But what I want to highlight is that there's a lot on that list that we're actually already doing that people don't know. I know that that's not a totally legible thing for you, but in my effort to be totally open and address this in a way that I hope gets shared... And I hope people talk about it. I hope the criticism and questions come. They always do anyway, so I don't need to hope for it. But I also hope that there's maybe some understanding and insight into some things we haven't shared before. And that's what we're going to start doing now. So before I dive into our fair play and proctoring, I just want to be totally open here. I'm, I'm a little nervous about this. In the, I don't know why. I don't get nervous that often anymore. But I suddenly felt myself getting the butterflies. And I was once told by somebody, whenever you're nervous, just say so. So Danny's a little nervous right now. And not because... Um, not because anything that, that I'm going to talk about is something I'm not supposed to talk about, I hope not, um, and reveal too much of what we do, but because the truth is what I'm about to talk about is near and dear in the hearts of a lot of personal friends of mine. I have, I have fielded a lot of very tough phone calls and emails over the last couple of weeks, and we are going to follow up today's show with an open letter to the global chess community, and I'm going to tell you that right before this show, I received a phone call from a dear friend who acknowledged to me that his student had cheated and admitted and asked me what the process was for his second chance. Uh, last week, I dealt with more high-profile closures in terms of cheating, things that were happening um, that, would, that would shock you. We have closed three north of 2,600 GMs and many people below that over the last week. And we made some breakthroughs. I, I want to come back to the March article that we talked about. Um, and um, talk about what I, I meant with that. I'm not, we are not going to get into names. So if those of you start screaming in chat and contrary, we, we have been publicly outed by some people who publicly outed themselves for cheating because they decided they would take the, the crying wolf approach and, and, and either call us liars or threaten suits and lawsuits and those sort of things. And some of you who are old school members here in the online chess community know who I'm talking about. People that have said directly or accused us of lying and threatened lawsuits, and I can say that nothing became of that, and so you can do the math. We have been taking a lot of heat by that open letter from title players, and in some cases, um, we have been specifically called out for not acting fast enough. I'm still not going to talk about names, but what I'm going to say is this. The improvements we made in terms of the 
the added the added cheat detection here um, have recently led to some to some breakthroughs that while we will continue to honor our promise of acting conservatively, if anyone in, in chat has a link, if you would, to our to our fair play and cheating on chess.com that has our testimonials from guys like Maxime Bache the Grave, Eric Hansen, John Bartholomew, people that we have invited to see under the hood and have given us their endorsement. You're also going to see a link there to a letter from the head of statistics at Harvard that says that chess.com has been audited and that as much as chess.com uh, can, as long as, as much as smoking can be proven to cause cancer, chess.com's cheating catches cheaters, but also acts conservatively. And the reason that's important to us is because as much as it always feels like we need to act in the moment, I got, I got to be totally honest and give news. I have zero interest in defaming or destroying the reputation of any title player or human being on the planet. And our, our policies operate in that we may be at sometimes criticized for acting too slowly. I'm aware that our company might lose many PR battles along the way of being seen as acting too slow, but you will know that when we pull the trigger, not only are we ready to go to court, but also we're not, we're not looking back. Despite threats and things that have come our way, you can also be sure that we're gonna continue to, to win the war while losing many battles in the sense that we're not gonna stop investing in creating opportunities for professionals online. We're, if anything, we're increasing it. And, and we're not doing it in, in one-off kind of splash big prize funds. We're doing it every week and giving every title player an opportunity to do something, not just with streaming, not just with Title Tuesdays, but with other Grand Prix series we have coming. Again, I, I won't say more, Nick, don't worry. But I'm getting into it because this isn't about me defending against open letter. This is about what I want to start diving into. I'm going to tell you as specifically as I can what it is that we do, is that this is a very difficult topic because when you close a young, talented, you know, person of any country who may actually be a very strong player, but have maybe have given in to water cooler talk and people saying, don't worry, chess.com can't catch you anyway. They were wrong. When you, when you close a title player who, even if we want to morally judge why they did it, might literally be fighting to feed his family because of what's happening with COVID-19 or because of other lack of opportunities. It's not right, and we do act, but we also don't judge and create a second chance opportunity with, with, with suspensions required for prize events and things like that because of that. When you, when you close anybody, even if they're just a, a, a regular member without a reputation in the chess community, you don't know what anybody's dealing with, their demons in their life, right? Be kind because you, you can't rewind. My mom always used to say that. And the point is, be kind because you don't know what other people are dealing with. And that is the policy we operate. So people who want to judge, usually behind an anonymous veil, that we're doing a wrong thing, I want you to know we're doing the right thing. And we're acting and we're closing people for, 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 for violations. And when we do, it's not easy for anybody. And sometimes it leads to the kind of heartfelt conversations that are very difficult to deal with between a parent talking about a child who came clean, or like I said, a friend of mine uh, with a student or a fellow title player. And so what is it? So that's so I've gotten my nerves out of the way. I want you to know, like, this is a very sensitive issue, but we're not dumb to it. And, and with some of the algorithms we've broken through with recently, we are about to close more title players than we ever have before. And we, every, everybody gets a review, and so that's some of the process we're getting into. But I want to describe to everybody before we invite the, invite the option that we're going to at the end of the show to understand a little more about what we do. So here are some of the things that people who have signed our NDA and taken that course, guys like John Bartholomew and others and, and people that know what we do, they know even more than the high-level points I'm going to give you, but I, I'm going to describe as best I can. So... Chess.com's fair play process. What is it that we do? So our team of fair play professionals, we use statistical methods. And the reason I want to emphasize that first is to always remind you that no matter what it looks like, we are never reacting to a mob mentality. We are acting with DNA evidence in terms of the blueprint of the game so that we could stand behind this legally. In March, we, we reviewed more than 90 million. That's actually, that's actually getting into the record levels of how many games and the fair play team has been working overtime. Um, to date in March, including some that we received, we have received more than 300 written confessions from title players, including grandmasters, including grandmasters north of 2,600. And I won't get into more specifics than that. So despite the public outcries you might hear, despite people being frustrated at times uh, that we acted too slowly, despite even the very, very few cases, and again, always in total transparency on stateofchess.com, and one that was on Reddit recently, I would argue that the fact that we were able to acknowledge that we were wrong about a specific case speaks more highly to the fact that you should trust us when we hold to our guns and don't reopen somebody. If anything, acknowledging the very, very few times we've been wrong over the last 9, 10 years might speak more truthfully and highly 
highlight to the fact that we are ultimately still humble. We don't claim to be perfect. We just claim to be doing our best. And if we mess up and a proper review is given, you will be given a chance at a second chance and you will be reopened. Hopefully that speaks more truthfully to the fact of what you can discern. The same manual review and appeal process is given to anybody who challenges us. And if we don't reopen them, what does that say? Um, and then and coming back there to our training processes um, on the... Um, on our fair play bullet points there, let's bring that up for everybody again. Our training process is that not only are we working within, within the internal group that we have um, that, uh, that works on this stuff, but we also are working with top agencies. So I, I jumped ahead a little bit um, to talk about the internal training process we have for the current team. So the current team recently expanded is of nine full-time team members. I'm only listing the full-time team members. I am not listing part-time um, maybe overseas who we're not allowed to call full time. Maybe maybe you know salary. It just I'm listing full time people who work to improve algorithms around the clock to protect the experience of our members on Chess.com and two titled players who are who are full time manual review experts and then many others that contribute, including yourself, uh, yourself. Yeah, you 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 can know yours truly, uh, and Grandmaster Robert Hess. Uh, as far as people that are in the inner circle of knowing and, and reviewing this stuff and have been improving our own review of not just looking at what the data, what the DNA is telling us and what the actual chess is telling us uh, for years. During events, and this is, this is back to the open letter that was said, and now I'm getting into it. The open letter addressed pretty directly some suggestions. What it doesn't know is that we're actually already doing the majority of that. The open letter even acknowledges, and I'm speaking to the title players who signed it, that within a reasonable view of what's possible to put people on camera, the open letter acknowledged in a Title Tuesday with more than 1,000 people, how could we reasonably be expected to put everybody on camera? One, that would hardly be fair to them. A lot of people have slow internet, right? Um, and if, you know, there's you know, no reason, I mean, it should be random. It shouldn't just be we pluck people to put them on camera, right? That would be profiling. And, um, but we do work with people, not only in terms of getting them on camera, requiring a view of their room, asking about their device, asking if they're alone. Also, we get screen share in cases. And I'm going to say that there have been cases where people were asked to do this and they immediately quit. Without naming names, you should know that as a title player community. You should also know that the players are, as I said, not only are they selected for random observation, but yes, also, if a player has been proven to not cooperate, they will then essentially be profiled, but not profiled. They will be asked to say, okay, well, it was random at first, but now that you won't cooperate, you're not allowed to compete again until you're able to do this this way, the way we want it. So a lot of people don't know we are doing that, um, in addition to the, to the very strong grandmasters and title players we've been closing over the last month. Um, and we're, we're working all the time, not just with top agencies, but with audits. We talked about the, the written letter we have from a uh, uh, head of statistics at Harvard, but we have others and, and we have been audited and we are continuing to get training. Uh, we're, we're taking notes from what other esports industries do in terms of how they proctor people. There is literally almost nothing that gets more of an investment and is leading to breakthroughs all the time than you know, as far as a back-end tool, right? Yes, we're working on a new board, and there's a lot of developers on that, and we, we invest in things you can see that are public-facing. But it, it is beyond, to say, a very serious um, focus for us. Um, and so the one of the reasons we're able to do what we do, and this is going to be the last thing I'm going to leave you with before we take a break and hopefully get into some of your questions, why, why do we claim to be doing... Um, as good of a job as we, I, I, again, I don't want to say we're claiming to be doing a good job or the best job. I, I think we're doing a, a great job within the means and investment that we can measure. And I think we can always do better. Um, but the, the main thing we're doing is trying to prepare to, to not just deal with individual cases, but our goal and our investment is to say the biggest pie in this guy thing is to eventually kind of end cheating at least in terms of title player events, a new person coming along who cheats one time or people who, you know, get given to temptation randomly. We, we obviously close accounts in that realm of the thousands every month, right? But we do believe that there is a potential future where in the process of us losing some PR battles and, and doing, th but doing things privately and conservatively, not in the open public way that some people would love to do uh, and, and scream cry, crying wolf, the truth is over time, less and less cheaters will be playing in our events because those who have tried to slander us and threaten suits, but then not, they're not playing anymore. People that won't admit they're not playing anymore in our events. And people that did had to serve in some cases, multi-year bans before they were given a second chance. And then are forever 
proctored even clo even more closely as they should be. Um, and we do not operate in a third chance opportunity. We operate in a second chance opportunity, and the third time is a ban for life. And does that mean that that um, we're going to start publicly saying names to scare other people? I don't believe in that form of capital punishment because I don't believe it's right to slander or defame a particular individual in order to make a point to others. But I will say we do believe that over time, as as people start to know things and know and know who and is not involved in the things, is that we can play a capital punishment game that people will be more scared. And part of my goal of this and telling my personal stories that I said made me nervous about, you know, the, 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 the friends and the kids and the other title players is to hopefully address this head on and let people know that if you are told that we're not catching cheaters, you're wrong and I'm asking you to not do it. And you should know that, again, you're right, that everyone is right, that we might act conservatively in a way that gets people frustrated on an individual event level. But we're not gonna stop creating opportunities and events for those players who are frustrated. They can rest assured in that. And the moment we have enough to close, it will be closed and they will not come back without the promise that they'll be clean to you forevermore and never have a second chance again if they, go, if they, if they cheat again or they won't be playing on the site. And our hope is that rumors do spread just privately in the sense that don't, don't do it, right? It's wrong. And again, no, no matter the level, the auto ban features that we made, that was part of the cheat detection logic. I guess I forgot to say that. Uh, Gerard, head of cheat detection, wanted me to do that in the sense that we are now closing. We had One of the algorithmic breakthroughs is we've been able to start closing with certainty. People might say, like, when you say you're now closing 1,000 more accounts every week, aren't you saying, Danny, that, that was 1,000 cheaters that you weren't getting to a week before? I am kind of saying that, but we're also getting 40,000 new accounts a day, sometimes repeat. And you can read the, what I'm saying the other way and saying, we weren't closing those accounts because we weren't sure. That means the algorithm breakthroughs we have have made have now, now we're closing a thousand more that we'd be ready to go to court over. And that hopefully inspires a little bit of confidence. So again, um, I'm here to both acknowledge the mistakes that we have been conservative at times and cheaters have gotten away with it for longer than I would have liked. I said it and it's true. We have also openly acknowledged at times where we've made mistakes and let them back. I hope you see that as a testament to the integrity of what we're doing and that we're willing to be wrong despite the rumors and not a testament that we're, that we're doing this the wrong way. If you consider how many of them are being closed, given reviewed and not being given a chance back. And then also we're not gonna stop investing in the prizes that we are and the open letter you sent title players has been received and everybody who's considering playing in the premium arena, you should know that it's even easier for us to catch cheaters who are not, by definition, having dedicated their life to the game and they're supposed to match up with engines. Is that my way of scaring you? You're darn right it is. Please don't cheat. We're going to catch you and we're going to catch you faster than you think and you're going to lose out on the legal rights to have your account, which you agreed to when you signed up. So we're saying all this in the, in the essence to say we love you. We do this, we're very fortunate to be where we are, to have the domain name we do, to have the model we do, to have the team we have, frankly, the people we have, the love in our investing in what we are. And we are, we are seeing the kind of trajectory that hopefully changes the chess world for all of us forever. But it has also led to this unfortunate pandemic where young people, um, and, and, I, and I'll even share that it was said by a, by a, a psychological expert, and um, I, I've observed this behavior from other people that, you know, during COVID, people have been doing some silly things at times. It, maybe it has led to some idle minds doing things they wouldn't otherwise. But um, we're, we're, we're catching everybody, we're acting, and we're not gonna stop investing in it. And hopefully you take this as our, as our word to know that I'm not, we're not claiming to be, to, to be not even close. If I told you the amount of things we'd like to break through, so that we know we can catch cheaters, not just in games, but in moves. We are working on it all the time with our, with our, um, with our awesome, awesome team. But we're also not gonna stop in the process of investing along the way, even when we know sometimes we act more conservatively than you would like, but at least you can know when we do close, we're not gonna look back and we have your back. And so on that note, there's been a lot of questions here. I understand that I'm gonna have to continue to answer for some of the things that have been said and our mod team have been pulling it. So I hope that, I hope that you hear the message. Um, it's going to be followed by a message sent out to all of our members today. And we hope that um, those who are looking for amnesty, which is going to be offered, which is an acknowledgement before our algorithmic breakthroughs start catching everyone even faster, that you might even take that opportunity um, in the sense that we're, we do give people a second chance anyway when they, when they admit. So to us, our offering amnesty is not really any different than that. It's just allowing you to be more proactive if that's something you want. So that's something we're going to be doing um, with today's stateofchess.com show. So spoiler alert, that's a big news that we're going to be sending out.